Okay, everybody, nice to uh, be with you in your homes once again. Uh, this is Steve, and I'm. what I'm doing today is I want to set you an exercise. And the exercise I want you to do is to take one of your favourite drawings, and I want you to turn it into a painting. But I want you to be led by the actual drawings. The drawing actually dictates how you execute the painting. The painting I want you to do, I want you to do it in acrylics. I'll send you a, I'll send you a materials list shortly, but it's pretty obvious what we're going to be using. And what I want to do is I want to show you some examples of artists whose drawings or their preparatory sketches, whatever they may, medium that might be, dictate the direction of their paintings. I'm going to show you three famous artists now. The first one is our old friend J. M. W. Turner. And here he is as a young man looking nothing like Timothy Spall. Uh, but here is one of his watercolours. Now to understand Turner, what you've got to realise is that what he was inspired by, what he wanted to recreate was the effects of light. And the way in which he captured the effects of light most successfully is through watercolour. The way in which watercolour moved, it ran into each other, is very similar to the way atmospheric effects happen, the, the effect of light, the effect of cloud. And so what he wanted to do was he just wanted to recapture recap the feeling of watercolour in oil painting. This is a very beautiful uh, painting of a sunset. He's actually painted this onto a sort of a grey handmade paper which he used to use. This is um, another one which is a painting he did of the Houses of Parliament on fire and he heard this commotion outside and he hired a man to row him into the middle of the River Thames and then taking just a few colours which looks to me like blue, yellow and red, the, the primary colours, he just did lots and lots of sketches to capture that feeling of this horrendous event where this building, this famous building, was on fire and it was reflecting in the water. And if we look at this oil painting we can see how he was inspired by the looseness of the watercolour and he was inspired to just let it flow and to capture the effects of that terrifying fire. I've got a feeling those flames might just be a little bit exaggerated but it gets across that terrifying feeling of the fire, the reflections being blown in the wind, the smoke and that type of thing. The next uh, one I just want to show you is one of my favourite turners. Um, some spoil sports say that he, this isn't finished but this is Norham Castle. This is in the um, the uh, Claw Gallery in the Tate, Tate Britain. And this is a oil painting, but he's made it look very much like a watercolour. So if you're going to be inspired by watercolour, I want you to actually make your acrylic paint flow like watercolour. I want you to water it right down so it's very, very thin, that type of thing. The next person I want to look at is the wonderful Vincent van Gogh. I have to say, I've never seen this drawing before. I'm not quite sure this is a real Van Gogh, but anyway, it's a kind of um, just it just g g gives you some idea. Uh, this is a, um, a looks like it's a copy of a self portrait of a Van Gogh, but this is one of his drawings. This is one of his earlier drawings when he left Paris and he went to Arles. And you will notice, I think I've mentioned this uh, to you before, the way in which every single field, every single different um, aspect of this is drawn in a different way. The marks that he's making with that reed pen, dip pen, um, he, sometimes they're strokes, sometimes they're curly bits, sometimes they're dots, but it's always different and it always makes the painting look very, very interesting. And, uh, sorry, the drawing looked very, very interesting. And then when we come along to the painting, you'll see how he has been dictated. The way in which he approaches the paint, the way in which he puts the paint down, is dictated by that sketch he's done. He's worked on the sketch, and then whether he does strokes, whether he does blobs, whether he does curly-whirly bits, whatever he's doing is dictated by the drawing. So this is what I want you to do. You may be going from, you know, working from black and white to colour, but I want the drawing to really dictate what you're going to be doing. Here's another one. This is later on, the San Remy period. Um, uh, this is when, you know, he, was, uh, he wasn't well and he was actually in a hospital. Uh, but again, can you see the sense of rhythm 
in this, the way those strokes really follow, it's almost like, you know, waves of the sea, the way that that cornfield is, 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 is undulating up and down, the energy of that sun, the rolling hills. And then when he comes to do the painting, it's the same thing. He's using those drawings as the guide for what direction his brush strokes are going to go. The drawing is dictating the painting. Last artist I want to show you, he's a little bit more contemporary, although he's not with us anymore, that's R.B. Kitai, uh, spelt uh, K-I-T-A-J, if you want to look him up, I think it's on your screen, I'll put it on the screen later on anyway. Um, he is an American, he was an American painter who uh, basically came to London, found his inspiration in London, and he did drawings in pastel. And there were wonderful drawings, which are almost as nice as some of uh, Degas drawings. And they have this wonderful glowing effect, clouds of pastel, very, very soft. As you can see, you can see sort of one color blending softly into another. He's really using the pastel very well. This is another one, more of a life drawing, um, a very, very beautiful drawing, very, very subtle colours. Um, although, I say, having said that, sometimes you can have these incredibly strong reds, oranges, the, the whatever the, uh, the, the model is actually sitting on, surrounded by those greys, um, other more neutral colours. But can you see how the way in which he's, he's, he's putting it down, he's using the um, soft pastel very very well. Then if we turn to his paintings now, this these are oil paintings, but can you see how he's been dictated, the way he uh, approaches the oil painting is how he's act, is dictated by the soft pastel. He still has this very soft effect, the way in which one a dark blue goes into a lighter blue, one co colour goes into another. The application of the paint, it's not this great big sort of you know thick impasto Van Gogh was using. He's using it very lightly and he's using Using it in this very powdery way. And then this one here, which is the last um, picture I'll show you, is actually in Pallant House in Chichester. So if you want to, when, when it's open again, if you want to go across to Chichester and see this, then uh, please do. But as you can see, it, it's a wonderful picture and you'll see again the way in which the paint is applied. It's very much like that soft pastel, a lovely powdery effect, very strong use of colour, very sort of, well I say solid areas of colours, there's dominant areas of colour, but the colours never solid, it's never flat. It's always got this kind of texture to it, just like the oil pastel. So that's what I want you to do. So please go away, look through your drawings and recreate a painting in acrylic, but I want it to be dictated to by the drawing, either by the direction of the strokes, the application of the drawing, and remember we're talking anything here from line drawing through to um, charcoal, through to pastel, through to watercolour, okay, so preparatory sketches. And I want you to recreate that painting and um, uh, I'm, we'll sort some way out in which we can have a look and discuss them. So. Thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying your time at home and I'm hoping to give you plenty to do. So get on with it.